Hey everyone, my name's Tenebris and welcome back to Road to Vostok. With the first update to the demo right around the corner here, I thought it would be good to go over all the massive changes coming your dude's way when the update drops. Road to Vostok has undergone some huge changes to the core game over the past six months, and today we'll cover them all so you can know what you're in store for in just a few short weeks from now. With over 16 new additions, a large number of them being drastically game-changing, this update is shaping itself to be not just Demo 1v2, but Road to Vostok stepping into a more serious iteration of itself, showing itself as the upcoming best hardcore FPS game to grace the market. We've got everything from a new inventory system, winter time, new weapons, and high quality audio to go with them, and so much more. So today, let's dive into all the changes coming in Demo 1v2 of Road to Vostok. The village map expansion is something I'm really looking forward to. With the original map being just a rough sketch, the village map expansion is more like a detailed painting by Bob Ross. It's looking beautiful. Utilizing a new terrain tool to craft and sculpt the map, the village map expansion isn't just an expansion, but an entire overhaul to the main playable area of the demo. Featuring newly added water features that we'll talk on next in this video, the potential of gameplay in this map far exceeds the last. And just in case if YouTube's compression isn't doing this justice, let's let a few slides roll by too. With these new water features comes the ability to interact with them as well, allowing for freeform swimming, simulated buoyancy, and a host of options to allow water to be either nice looking and performance intensive, or more streamlined for lower end PCs. And with this new water system, we also get better looking puddle shaders too. But drifting away from the new water system, the audio has gotten an entire overhaul here in the game, firstly with new ambient zones and realistic reverb. As well, weapon audio has gotten completely overhauled and is now sounding incredibly well done. Then there are the new weapons, which brings the total of guns in Road to Vostok up to 14. And this is only its first update to the demo. It shows great potential for being a real loot-rich experience, having an already growing and sizable roster of weapons to use. And with weapons to use, we're also seeing improvements to how we use them. With the new arms rig in the game, there are tons of minute improvements to things like recoil, but one of the biggest improvements is how it makes the interact screen a more realistic experience, with the previous arms sticking out at kinda odd angles. This new system looks better and interacts better, allowing for flipping the weapon while inspecting it, and in the future much more detailed animations for stuff like reloading, healing, and eating. Now let's cool down from all this weapon stuff and talk about the new season, which will bring its own aspects of immersive survival. Winter time. 
For now, it'll be a toggle option in the menu, but when the full game comes around, a seasonal cycle will have you surviving not just through summer or a stagnant season, but a full-on summer-winter cycle that will see you preparing for the harsh cold winter months or potentially suffering the consequences. With the new inventory system, it's become so much more robust. With the ability to pick items up and switch them around, flip and rotate them, and seamlessly transition them into storage containers. The old inventory was one of the few pain points of the first demo, so seeing it get fixed and in such a thorough way shows a lot of promise for our TV's future. And alongside the inventory, we'll also have the full-on equipment system, allowing us to equip items like coats, backpacks, and even a plate carrier. Though, the last one might be pretty rare even in the demo. The whole inventory has undergone such a massive evolution, from a simple click-based inventory to one that's immersive and reactive. And to top it all off, your character preview will also fully update with every item you place on your character, and in the future, your player model will change based on what you're wearing. One of the more fun things to mess around with that will have a huge impact on how we explore locations in the future, Road to Vostok will feature climbable ladders. Take that, Escape from Tarkov! No, but on a serious note, these ladders will be great to see how they're used and expanded on with the upcoming maps, from hidden locations to neat structures like the tree fort. Climbing will be just as cool as the water system for how it will expand on the world of Vostok. And going side by side with how we'll explore things, night vision goggles will aid with nighttime exploration and combat. For now, it's a toggleable feature, but in the future, we'll have to find our own NVGs properly in the game world. Items like plate carriers, high-end weapons, and high-tech stuff like night vision goggles will all be pretty hard to obtain in Road to Vostok when it's out properly. But during this demo phase, it's mostly about getting things right instead of having a massive loot simulator. But there's still going to be so much more about weapons along the way too. With the attachment system coming to this demo update, we'll see the interaction screen actually become interactive. We've already gone over how you can inspect weapons and turn them over with the new FPS arms. But while you do this, you're able to swap around attachments like suppressors, scopes, and mags. And on top of this, with the new rail system, you can even adjust where your scope is on the rail and its reticle brightness, which is just so fantastically immersive and even lets you find benefits to where your preferred scope position is and adjusting the radical brightness based on light level. The attachment system is one of the real highlights of how interactive RTV is, so I'm very excited for everyone to get their hands on this feature specifically when the demo comes around. And to top it all off, just like with our weapon selection, there is a growing list of attachments to go alongside them. A bunch of them are attachments I haven't gotten to use yet in our TV as well, so I'm really stoked to go through all of these when the demo lands in the next few weeks. And we had touched on how Recoil was updated earlier, and with this it's easier to show than tell. But essentially, recoil just feels much more natural, the weapons behave much better, and it overall is becoming a really excellent recoil system. Pistols used to feel like a laser beam, and now they have a ton more going into how they recoil and where that bullet is lining up to. And rifles behave much more naturally and controllably than they were before. Small but nice feature to come along the way, canted aiming. We could switch our aiming fluidly and on the fly, and this will open up room in the future for further attachments and just adds a ton of cool points to the game. 
Plus, you can aim cant it with any weapon in the game, which you just don't see enough in video games. Usually with canted aiming being related to a sight, in RTV it holds a bit more realism, with canted aiming being a method of holding the weapon instead of just an attachment. And lastly, the brand new item renderer, which not only makes all the guns and items of the game look better, but it also gives them an easy to generate high quality inventory icon, which is just a glimpse at the multitasking, custom tools, and workflow of the developer of this game. Killing two birds with one stone metaphorically happens with each step of the project, sometimes multiple times over. It's actually really impressive to watch happen from the outside. So with Road to Vostok on the cusp of greatness here, I want you all to stay tuned for the announcement of Demo 1v2. As I said, it'll be announced within the next few weeks, and the wait after that will be right around the corner. So stay tuned for everything related to Road to Vostok by subscribing to stick around. But for now, I want to say thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.